Hello and welcome to another edition of Focus, a program produced by the Department of Disaster Management, DDM. I'm your host, Viona Alexander-Smith, Information and Education Manager at the DDM. For the first time, World Tsunami Awareness Day will be observed on November 5, 2016. So for this edition of Focus, we will raise awareness about this rare but extremely deadly hazard. But first, here's some details on the introduction of World Tsunami Awareness Day. In December 2015, the UN General Assembly designated November 5th as World Tsunami Awareness Day. This year's inaugural observance focuses on education and evacuation drills. Japan is the brainchild of World Tsunami Awareness Day due to its repeated bitter experience over the years. The objective of the Caribbean commemoration is to raise public awareness regarding tsunami risk in the Caribbean and share innovative approaches to reducing risk. Understanding tsunami risk and how to prepare for them is extremely important because unlike other hazards such as earthquakes and hurricanes which occur annually, ocean-wide tsunamis occur approximately every 15 years. When they do occur, they can cause widespread loss of life and property. In fact, in the past 100 years, 58 of them have claimed more than 260,000 lives, or an average of 4,600 per disaster, surpassing any other natural hazard. Although rare, the BVI and its Caribbean neighbors are geographically located in an area which can generate tsunamis. Added to this is the fact that the BVI is surrounded by water and, of course, low-lying coastlines. In 2015, the Caribbean was also reminded of the seriousness of this imminent hazard when scientists revealed that new risk models showed a potentially large earthquake in Caribbean subduction zones would be capable of generating catastrophic tsunamis. This study determined that if a tsunami occurred on the dormant Puerto Rico Trench, it would not only cause flooding along the northern and western coastlines of Puerto Rico, but also generate nine-meter waves across the neighboring islands of the Dominican Republic and the U.S. and British Virgin Islands. The Puerto Rico Trench is the deepest place in the Atlantic Ocean and is located on the boundary between the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. The trench is associated with a complex transition between the Lesser Antilles subduction zone to the south and the major transform fault zone or plate boundary, which extends west between Cuba and Hispaniola through the Cayman Trench to the coast of Central America. This prediction reinforces the need for all of us to stay alert and prepare. So here are some important facts you should always remember about tsunamis. be many miles long, from 1 to 100 feet high, traveling at 400 miles per hour. This ocean monster is known as a tsunami, and it can wreak havoc on coastal populations and landscapes. A tsunami is a series of ocean waves caused by any large and sudden disturbance of the sea surface. Tsunamis can be generated by landslides, volcanic eruptions, or even meteorite impacts in the ocean but they are most often caused by an earthquake where there's a sudden displacement of the ocean floor. When that happens, there's a transfer of energy from the sea floor to the ocean, causing waves on the surface to radiate outward in all directions. In deep waters, these waves may not even be detectable. But when the tsunami enters shallower waters, the wave speed slows and its height increases the water along the coast may recede noticeably. A large wall of turbulent water, called a bore, may also form. When the tsunami hits, it may come ashore like a fast-rising flood and strike with devastating force. The series of waves may continue for hours. The first one may not be the last or the largest. For your safety, know the potential warning signs of an incoming tsunami. 
a strong earthquake that causes difficulty standing, a rapid rise or fall of the water along the coast, a loud ocean roar. When you're in a coastal area, it's important to keep alert for messages from local officials, such as lifeguards, police, the U.S. Tsunami Warning Centers, and NOAA All Hazards Radio. If you find yourself in a location of a tsunami strike, here's what you need to do to stay safe. Keep calm. Walk or run to higher ground, 100 feet above sea level or one mile inland. Do not drive. Keep roads open for emergency vehicles. If you cannot move to higher ground, use the stairs to get to the third floor or higher in a sturdy building. Follow all instructions from local officials and stay out of coastal areas until authorities issue an all clear. Tsunamis can strike any coastline in the world and can affect locations thousands of miles away from where they formed. They may be uncommon, but the devastation they cause makes them a deadly force in nature. For more information on tsunamis, go to the following sites. As you just heard, volcanic eruptions and landslides can trigger a tsunami, but the most common trigger of a tsunami is an earthquake. The BVI is located in a seismic active zone and earthquakes are a common occurrence, even if they are not always felt. Although there are no records of a tsunami affecting the Virgin Islands in living memory, records dating back more than 100 years indicate that the Virgin Islands experienced a destructive tsunami in 1867. The 1867 Virgin Islands tsunami reportedly occurred on November 18 following a magnitude 7.5 earthquake in the Anigada Trough. The earthquake was said to consist of two shocks which generated two tsunami waves which struck the St. Thomas, St. Croix and Hazel Island in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The tsunami also produced 1.2 to 1.5 meters of run-up and washed away most of the smaller buildings on Tortola and Peter Island here in the British Virgin Islands. There's also another record of a possible tsunami or a large wave to affect the territory. Geologist Dr. Brian Atwater from the United States Geological Survey and his team of scientists have been conducting research over the past eight years to determine what caused an unusual flood from the sea that brought ashore large coral heads in Anigada around the 1400s. The team visits Anigada annually to continue collecting evidence. Dr. Atwater, during a presentation in early 2016, noted that the research team was considering testing three scenarios to determine if any of them matched the evidence collected since the research process began in 2008. The three scenarios are two types of Puerto Rico trench tsunamis and an unusual superstorm similar to the 2013 Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines. As part of the research, Dr. Atwater noted that the team worked with a modeler to develop three simulations, plotted and tested the model results using LIDAR surveying technology. Then the team went into the field to see if the evidence there supports the simulation results. Based on the outcome, the scenarios which do not match the field evidence in Anigada will be eliminated. Although this research is ongoing, the mere fact that there are geological evidence on Anigada of overwash from the north that overtop beach ridges at least three meters high is enough to signal the need for tsunami preparedness. Stay tuned to Focus as we continue to inform you about tsunamis. So you think it's all about sport? Running can save your life. Say you're at the beach, having a good time, and you feel a strong shaking. Run. See the water withdraw an unusual distance from the shore. Run. Hear a strange roar. Run. If you experience any of these warning signs, run to higher ground. There may not be enough time for an official tsunami warning. Be tsunami smart. Know the natural warning signs. Are you ready? Visit WeReady.org. Brought to you by Sadima and the European Union. Run.
Welcome back to Focus. Tsunami awareness is the focus for this edition. With all this historical information on tsunamis and the possibility of one in the future, preparedness for this eventuality is paramount. The Department of Disaster Management, DDM, has been doing all within its power to prepare everyone here in the BVI. Tsunami evacuation route signs and tsunami safe location signs have been posted throughout the territory. The population is tested for a tsunami event annually during the National Carib Wave or Lantex exercise. And efforts have been ongoing to raise awareness about tsunamis through presentations to various sectors and the development and release of tsunami inundation maps, which provide an indication of how far inland waves are likely to reach. There are also early warning systems in place which help to detect tsunamis in advance and issue warnings. DDM's Emergency Communications Officer, Jason Penn, is joining the program now to speak more about the systems we have in place. Welcome to the program, Jason. Thank you for having me. What type of tsunami early warning systems do we have in place here at the DDM? Well, there are two systems in particular that we use. Uh, the CISN network, California Institute Seismic Network, and the Emergency Manager's Weather Information Network. The CISN network is a network of different uh, seismic, uh, seismological agencies throughout the U.S. and throughout the world uh, that came up with this particular website type database that registers earthquakes all around the world. Anywhere in the world that has earthquakes and that is a part of this network, uh, we could see these these earthquakes can be viewed real time. So as as the Puerto Rico Seismic Network being the official source of issuing tsunami watches are one and for the BVI, uh, we were able to uh, receive access to this particular network and we use that as one of our tools as well. Uh, the Emergency Managers Weather Information Network, uh, that's also a US-based um, network through the National Weather Service. And what that, how this network works is a uh, number of um, meteorological stations, again, US-based throughout the world, dump, send all the information to this particular um, server farm location. And what agencies like ourselves do is there are a number of different headers for particular information that you want. Mm -hmm. So for instance, as it relates to tsunami, there's a tsunami header. So the Department of Disaster Management would uh, subscribe for that tsunami header. So if there's a particular tsunami or a huge earthquake event that might generate a tsunami in this region, uh, we receive that real time as well. Okay. Uh, I must mention with the MWIN that is called for short. Uh, it works via satellite. So all information comes in uh, via ghost down to the DDM and we receive this information whether via the internet or standalone computers that we have in house. Right, and the information once shared <coughs> is um, communicated to all persons who are part of the network, particularly uh, where the CSIN is concerned? Uh, yes, uh, the CISN, the CISN is, is, um, is shared with everyone. So anybody, anywhere in the world, um, how the system actually works, uh, this is it here in the background. You can see this kind of map of the uh, time zone of the world. So. Over here, this will illustrate, for instance, what created in the last hour, last day, last week, and the particular magnitude. And this is the region that we focus on. I'll just zoom in quite a bit. You can see that's Puerto Rico. Uh, the British Virgin Islands is somehow, somewhere within this region. And you can see the color blue it will illustrate the earthquakes that happened maybe in the last day. Then you have, you have no reds. You have yellow in the boxes and indicate the size. Uh, this area here would indicate the, the time, the magnitude, and the date. Mm -hmm. So, it in a nutshell, would give us an idea of the earthquakes that we are experiencing, maybe how big, mm -hmm. and we, how we would have to prepare, or if the Puerto Rico Seismic Network see it fit, they'll then issue information um, to the DDM. Okay, will okay. certain magnitudes not be recorded on this system? All magnitudes are recorded. However, you set the threshold 
of the magnitude earthquakes that you would like the system to alarm or alert you to. Um, if you don't do that, then every single earthquake that happens for the day, if you if you don't set a threshold threshold or a filter, the system will just continually keep um, going off. It'll keep giving you an alarm. So we focus mostly on the the, the region that I just showed you with the box. We typically just focus on that particular mm -hmm. area, and based on our protocols, um, we uh, we are more we concentrate mostly on earthquakes that are 4.0 and above. We do get earthquakes p from time to time that are smaller magnitudes. Uh, those we issue information statements via our website, Facebook, whatever type of medium we have of getting that information out. Right. Uh, does the DDM collaborate with other agencies to share this information that we collect um, pertaining to earthquakes and the potential for a uh, tsunami? Uh, yes. Um, over the years, we've been able to form a very good relationship with the University of Puerto Rico and through that relationship um, we've been working for years with the Puerto Rico Seismic Network and after that um, we work with the, uh, the Puerto Rico Strong Motion Program. Now, this just speaks slightly uh, the difference between the both, difference between uh, the two agencies. The Puerto Rico Seismic Network concentrates specifically on issuing the watches, alerts, warnings, so they're more interested in the, the magnitude type um, events mm -hmm. that can potentially generate tsunamis and other hazards so they can issue a lot or uh, any type of warnings. The Puerto Rico Strong Motion Program, they're more interested in building design, seismic events in terms of building designs, uh, what magnitude quakes it would take to maybe take down certain buildings, and they develop their, their structural policies and regulations based on this um, research or this amount of data that they collect over a period of time. Um, why we've enjoyed, why they've reached out to us, and particularly uh, the, the Virgin Islands, is the fact that uh, we have Anigata, which is a, a very close point, close um, location to one of the faults that they monitor. Uh, through, again, through, the, through this relationship, we've Establish a seismic, a full-fledged seismic uh, a station in Adigata uh, that that transfers information via the internet. Uh, it's monitored remotely by Puerto Rico. That information is shared with us. Uh, the Puerto Rico Strong Motion Program. They too have a network in uh, the Virgin Islands where they have a number of strong motion sensors located next to or within a number of different buildings uh, within, within the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. uh, through those relationships, we are also able to form more relationships, particularly with the, with the United States Geological Survey, who have mm -hmm. a number of uh, GPSs uh, that, they, that they use, as well as UNAFCO, who under UNAFCO, um, they have develop this thing you call a uh, coconut and this is a network of, uh, of hundreds of GPSs located throughout the, throughout the region and the world and they're using GPSs even so to to look at movements of different um, locations and they've been tied in with the whole seismic um, type of um, program as well. If a tsunami is imminent, uh, the, what happens in terms of the alert messages that come to the department and what happens thereafter? Well, if a tsunami is imminent and typically the Department of Disaster Management is not a 24-hour agency. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force would be a tsunami warning focal point for the, for the Virgin Islands. So even though we may, we will receive um, the information. Uh, police is the one will have will that be the first mode of contact of having to alert um, the public if there's a potential tsunami or not. If if the DDM is is open, and most likely if if it, if it comes in, we through the um, the receive through the receipt of the information from them to us. And we also would receive the information too as well. We would then take more of a more um, strategic, strategic lead in leading um, um, alerting the public 
but if it's after hours, it will be solely reliant. We will be solely reliant on police. Uh, police also have the ability to activate a number of the different systems that we use. Uh, the radio data service. That's with some small radios that we have, some small um, type um, smart radios that we can issue uh, tsunami information and tsunami alerts. They have the ability also to activate a uh, a siren um, siren mm -hmm. network and have access to a number of different um, um, a lot of mechanisms where to receive the information that we receive, they have uh, that ability as well. Thank you so much, Jason, for shedding some light on the early warning systems we have in place here at the DDM. Thank you. I also spoke with Krista von Hillebrandt on Drade about advancements made in early warning systems and technologies which improve the detection and monitoring of tsunamis. Here's what she had to say about tsunamis during our telephone interview. So let's start with you first providing us with a brief overview of the Caribbean Tsunami Warning Program and how it works. The Caribbean Tsunami Warning Program was established by the National Weather Service in the year 2010 um, in response to the recognized need of advancing tsunami readiness and preparedness here in the Caribbean. Um, our office um, is part of the southern region of the National Weather Service, um, just like the San Juan Forecast Office. Um, we are located in Mayagüez, Puerto Rico, so we are here um, located in the Caribbean, and I have um, I manage the, the program. In addition to myself, we have Carolina Incapié, who is the um, deputy manager, and then we have several students that do rotations lasting usually a year in our office working on special special pro projects. Okay, great. How do you go about providing tsunami guidance to uh, territories such as the BBI? Okay, so we, there's, I guess we can divide the guidance in two parts. One is the guidance, event guidance, guidance, so when there is a tsunami event, how we, what information, what products do we provide to the BVI? And another um, area that we're very engaged in is how we provide support in preparing the communities and the countries to respond um, to tsunami alerts that could be issued. So in terms of... of during an event, the British Virgin Islands um, actually falls under the domestic warning um, responsibilities of, of the Weather Service. So unlike all the other countries, um, non-U.S. countries in the Caribbean, uh, per request of BVI many years ago, they were included in the domestic services of the National Weather Service. And what that means is that the Tsunami Warning Center, which is continuously monitoring seismic activity and sea level activity, will actually, during an event, depending on the size of the event or the potential impact, will issue anything from a tsunami information statement, which just says there's been an event, but there's going to be no tsunami impact, on up to a tsunami warning. So it's directly issued by the Weather Service through its Tsunami Warning Center for the BVI. Um, so that's, um, in, in the case of other countries in the Caribbean, um, the product that we issue is just for guidance only. Um, it's a, a threat information bulletin. And then it is the country itself or the UK territory, um, in the case of the UK territories or the, or the French dependencies, they're the ones that then have to decide what level of alert to assign, whether a warning or advisory or a watch. And then in addition to that, then we, all of us recognize that it's not only important to receive a product that alerts one that there could be an imminent danger or threat, but is that the countries and the people that live and visit the countries are ready to respond. So we support um, the countries and we provide guidance in terms of um, language that should be used, harmonized language, um, what would be the potential areas you'd want to go to in case of a, a, a tsunami, um, standard operation, operating procedures of you know, what would be the, the different activities that would be carried out at different times. These are all things that National Weather Service is also very you know, happy and, and able to provide guidance to countries like the BVI. What types of early warning systems are in place to detect a possible tsunami? And how is the information shared with the BBI? The tsunami warning centers 
They're monitoring several streams of data 24-7. And the most important streams of data um, are the seismic data and the sea level data. The seismic data um, is what's actually used to trigger the first tsunami product. So continuously, we monitor the seismic activity across the whole globe. And when we detect an earthquake of a certain magnitude, location, in a certain area, according to pre-established criteria, then we will issue um, the corresponding product. So for example, if it's a moderate earthquake, an earthquake of magnitude 4.5, 50 kilometers deep in the, in the area of the BVI, we'll, we'll issue a tsunami information statement. And that basically says, you know, there's been an earthquake, you might have felt it, you might be concerned, but don't worry, there's no tsunami. Um, then if the earthquake is a little bit larger, for example, if it's between a magnitude 6.5 and a 7, then we could, our interpretation will be, and it's in the area of Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, we would say, um, there has been an earthquake, it's been pretty strong, it could generate a tsunami, but this tsunami is not going to be that big. And the only thing that we would expect is really strong currents in, in harbors and marinas, this is called an advisory. So we just um, suggest that you know people that are in the water along beaches, you know, be careful. And then if it's even if it's a larger earthquake, then we would go ahead and issue a warning. So that's all done based on the seismic information. So depending on the magnitude of the earthquake, the location of the earthquake, the expertise of the people at the tsunami warning center, we issue those products. But to confirm whether or not a tsunami has actually occurred or what the level of impact it's having. That, for that, we monitor sea level stations. For example, downtown Tortola, there's a sea level station whose data is received in real time at the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center at the National Tsunami Warning Center. So if there was an event, they're going to go and they're going to check on that station to see what, you know, have there been changes of level? Was this, did the tsunami affect that area? That's all going to be monitored. And that's done with, we have um, currently, in terms of data streams, there's over 125 seismic stations that go into the tsunami warning centers, including the one on Tortola, Virgin Gorda, and Nagata. All that station is continuously monitored at our tsunami warning centers. And just as what, like at the, and the sea level stations, there's like 77 sea level stations that are continuously also monitored by the tsunami warning center. So that's in terms of data stream. But what do we do when there is, when we issue a product? How do we issue that product? We issue that product over many different channels of information. We would, for example, if it's a, there's actually a threat, um, we would send to the BVI, to the Tsunami Warning Focal Point, which is the Royal Police Authority, and also the Department of Disaster Management. We'll send a fax. We'll send emails. Um, we will post it on our websites. We will send it out over satellite through a system called Emergency Managers um, Weather Information Network. And so through all these means, you'll have access, the authorities in the Virgin Islands will have access to that information. In parallel, individuals can receive these products via their, their cell phones. They can get um, see it, the main broadcast media will also disseminate that information. So there's many ways that you'll be able to get those bulletins that are issued by the Tsunami Warning Centers. Right, so it's a quite a comprehensive system in place to ensure that the message does get out. But are there any advancements in early warning systems and technologies being tested at the moment or being considered for implementation to improve tsunami detection and monitoring? That is an excellent question, and I'm so glad you brought that up, Fiona, because right now we're um, evaluating how to integrate GPS data, so that's Global Positioning Systems, um, data and for those are stations that actually measure the displacement or movement of, uh, of of ground and so these GPS stations which are very precise stations for measuring positions we're now evaluating whether that could also give us some insight into when a, when an earthquake or has a really uh, the potential of producing a very big tsunami because the traditional seismic data that we use that's daily in use um, by our seismic networks and the warning centers, they can clip if the earthquake is really large. So if we get like a big, and that's what sort of what happened in Japan in 2011, that they thought the earthquake is a lot smaller than it was 
because the, the, the seismic instrumentation was saturated in the local area. And, but if we integrate GPS data that's already available and we're analyzing different um, software, then we could um, actually um, accurately be able to size or determine the, the, the size of very large earthquakes and then be, give even better advice during a tsunami event. So that's something, that's one of the new um, projects that we're working on in our tsunami warning centers. Now, the territory is a tsunami ready nation. Explain why the tsunami ready program is an important aspect of tsunami preparedness for the BBI and for other Caribbean islands. And um, just tell us what you can see in the future in terms of other countries becoming tsunami ready. Okay, so BVI was recognized for the first time as tsunami ready in the year 2014. And right now is part of a select group of 52 um, communities um, in the Caribbean and adjacent regions that are, have this designation as tsunami ready. Tsunami ready is, is very important because it provides the tools and the the guidelines by which um, main activities that a, that a country, a nation should should carry out in order to become be ready for the tsunami when it strikes. Now, the Tsunami Ready Program was adopted by UNESCO IOC, so now it's officially a recognition program of UNESCO IOC, and our uh, we look to expand it um, to you know to, to all the Caribbean, the 48. Caribbean states and um, member states and territories. Up to date, we have five member states and territories that are tsunami ready. So Puerto Rico, USVI, British Virgin Islands, Anguilla, and our newest tsunami ready nation, which was um, St. Kitts and Nevis. We have um, currently, we will be undergoing some more pilot and some more testing of the tsunami ready pro program in Honduras. And uh, we're, um, other countries maybe like um, Grenada, We've had um, inquiries from Tor T Tobago, from Trinidad and Tobago, and also from from Haiti and Dominican Republic. So there's a lot of interest in the program, and we look hope for look forward to continuing to work with BVI because they will have to renew their recognition in the year 2017. So it is only a three-year recognition. Tsunamis do not happen very frequently in our region, so some persons may may not understand the need to be prepared for such an event. Um, what would you say to these individuals to encourage them to take tsunami preparedness seriously? Well, the countries where there's been not enough preparedness or some people have underestimated the potential of tsunamis, people have died. If you're not ready and you do not respond appropriately during a tsunami, it's your life that you can lose. Your, li your life, the life of your loved ones. And then... Also, you know, businesses can be severely affected. The whole economies can also um, traverse, you know, very serious consequences. Tsunamis are, do not occur frequent, frequently in the Caribbean, but there have been over 75 tsunamis. Tsunamis do happen in the Caribbean. So, you know, my, my urge to people is, you know, don't let the infrequencies of tsunamis disarm us. If you let the infrequency disarm you, it can cost you your life. That was Krista von Hillebrandt Andrade, manager of the Caribbean Tsunami Warning Program. So you think it's all about sport? Running can save your life. Say you're at the beach, having a good time, and you feel a strong shaking. Run. See the water withdraw an unusual distance from the shore. Run. Hear a strange roar. Run. If you experience any of these warning signs, run to higher ground. There may not be enough time for an official tsunami warning. Be tsunami smart. Know the natural warning signs. Are you ready? Visit WeReady.org. Brought to you by Sadima and the European Union. Run. Thanks for tuning in to the program. I am Viona Alexander-Smith, Information and Education Manager at the DDM, encouraging you to learn all you can about tsunamis and be prepared. Join me next time for another edition of Focus on CBN Television and on 90.9 FM.